three. Good day, everyone. This is Orekoya Olusegun, Physics Mathematics Fundamental on YouTube. Please, before we go into today's exercise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click on notification buttons on my video so that I can have more of my video. Thank you so much. Today, we want to solve uh, a problem under analytical geometry. And the subtopic we are going to take is called the hyperbola. I've discussed about uh, coding session in my other video. You can make a reference to it so that you can understand what coding session is all about. So we are going to solve uh, an exercise or a series of questions under conic, uh, under hyperbola, which is part of the coding session. Look at what I have here, the hyperbola questions and answers under analytical geometry. Now, I want to just explain something concerning uh, hyperbola. Let's say I have the y axis here, then I have the x axis here. Now, let me say here, I have a point here, and then this point, I have something like a, a kind of a parabola. If you beam it, uh, uh, a touch light, the ray of a touch light on this uh, uh, parabola, it will have an image that will look like this on the negative side of the x axis. Now, this particular point where the parabola, I mean the hyperbola, touches uh, the x axis on each case is known as the vertex. So this one can be called vertex uh, V1, and then uh, this place can be called vertex uh, V2. Now, the other vertex of the parabola, which is vertex uh, V3 and V4. They are located at this place. This is vertex uh, uh, 3, and this place will be the vertex uh, 4. Now, there is a particular line that when drawn through this origin, it will not touch the parabola. And that particular line, one of the lines here, is called the asymptote. Asymptote. Now you can see that this particular asymptote has a negative, uh, I mean, a positive uh, gradient. We can have another asymptote that we draw through, uh, through the origin here, like this, which is not going to touch the graph of the hyperbola. This another asymptote is carries negative uh, uh, gradient. Now, this particular hyperbola, these two curves are known as the hyperbola. The hyperbola has fixed points here. The one we are considering is the one that has the fixed points called the focal point on the x axis. This one is focal point one, and this place is focal point uh, two of the uh, hyperbola. Now, the distance from the origin, the point of intersection on the vertical and horizontal axis, that distance is A. So, in a nutshell, the coordinate of uh, vertex V1 is going to be A on the x axis and zero on the y axis. Because this particular side of the hyperbola has uh, a mirror image, the distance between this vertex to the origin will be negative a. So from here, will be negative a. So in a nutshell, the coordinates of v2 will be minus a on the x axis and zero on the y axis. Now, the distance from the origin to the focal point is distance uh, C. And this particular distance C uh, is positive because we are on the positive side of the x axis. For the mirror image of the distance of this focal point F2, it's going to be minus C. So, because of that, now the coordinate of this focal point F1 is going to be C on the x axis, that's plus C, and 0 on the y axis. And uh, the mirror image of this focal point here is going to be minus c on the uh, x axis, that's the coordinates, and zero on the y axis for focal point uh, f2. Now, for the vertex v3, the distance from the origin is plus v, which implies that the value of this point along the x axis is zero, and the value along the y axis is uh, plus v. So the vertex v4, Towards the negative side of the y axis, the value on the x axis of this point is zero, and the value on the y axis is going to be minus uh, b. Now, another thing I want us to consider 
is the relationship between all these distances A, B, and C that we have in this on this diagram. Distance A, then distance this B, and distance then this C. The right angle triangle that will make us to remember the relationship is this. Um, the hypotenuse of your right angle triangle is this distance C, and then the height is uh, A, and the base of the height, let's say, is B, and the base is C. Um, no, is uh, A. So from Pythagoras theorem, the hypotenuse, uh, uh, hypotenuse squared, that is C squared, is equal to A squared plus B squared, which implies that this distance C is equal to square root of a square plus a b square. Now, another thing we want to discuss is called the eccentricity. The eccentricity. Generally, the eccentricity of a coding session is given as this distance c is equal to eccentricity e, I mean, times the distance a. Since our c has been obtained to be this, so I can have my value of c to be written as a square plus b square is equal to e a. I can make this eccentricity e to be the subject of formula. So this eccentricity e, we can take this a here as square root of a, a square plus b square is equal over a is equal to this e by dividing both sides by a. Then I can allow this a to stand under this square root sign by squaring it. So I can have this as a, a square plus b square all over a square is equal to e. This a square cancel this a square. So in a nutshell, essentially e can be simplified as a, a square in a square will be 1. Then plus a square in b square will be b square all over a square. So this is the formula for the eccentricity e of the uh, hyperbola. Now, I want to also be mention about if you are asked to find uh, the equation of the asymptote. For this particular asymptote that we have here, the, uh, the value of the equation is y is equal to b over a x. So the gradient is plus b all over a. That is the equation of the asymptote here. So the equation of the asymptote for this particular gradient, which is a negative gradient, is a mirror image of the equation of the uh, asymptote that is inclined in this way. So in a nutshell, we are having y is equal to minus b all over a x. So in summary, all the formulae that I have put together are like this. Number one, I have put together vertex v1 V2. I'm talking about these two vertex here. So the uh, coordinates can be summarized as a plus or minus a comma zero. I'm talking about this particular vertex and this vertex, which I have given you. I can summarize it as this. And then vertex V3 and then V4 on the diagram. If you look at this diagram up, Vertex V3 is this, and vertex V4 is this. So this can be summarized as 0 plus or minus uh, B. Now, for this focal, the foci, the foci I can be, uh, F can be written as, in summary, as uh, plus or minus C, uh, no, sorry, 0, sorry, plus or minus C, for the x axis, then zero on the y axis. That's the full side. And the formula connecting the eccentricity is this one. And another thing I want to tell us is what is called transverse axis. Transverse axis. Transverse axis is a straight line connecting the vertex of an hyperbola. So along these uh, x axis, the transverse axis is from this uh, vertex to this vertex. And the total distance from here to here is A when we neglect the minus sign. The total distance from here to here is A when we neglect the minus sign. So the total distance from here to here will be A plus A. So that will give us uh, 2A. That is the length, the length of this uh, transverse axis. 
along the x axis. For the second axis, the second axis is between these two vertices. So the second axis now is called conjugate axis. Conjugate. Conjugate uh, axis. And the distance between these vertices, from here to here is B, from here to here is another B, neglecting the negative sign. So it, it means the total distance will be B plus B, that is uh, 2B. That's the, the length of the conjugate uh, axis. This conjugate axis for this diagram is along the vertical axis, while the transverse axis is along the horizontal axis. So we are going to use this formula to solve the problem I have here. This problem says exercise. Show that this expression we have here is an equation of uh, hyperbola. And find the following vertices, covertices, focal points, length of the transverse axis, length of the conjugate axis, eccentricity, and the second one, equations. The equations of the asymptosis. Asymptotes. Asymptosis. Now, this is very simple. Generally, you should remember something that the equation of an hyperbola that whose transverse axis is along the x axis is given as a square all over a square uh, minus a y square all over b square is equal to 1. Now, we need to recast this equation to have this formal, uh, this, this formality. First thing I'm going to do is to carry this constant to this side and divide that constant by itself so that I can have this one. What are we going to do now? I have 9a squared minus 16y squared is equal to 144. To be able to get one, we divide both sides by 144. So this thing will now be 9a squared all over 144 minus uh, 16 y squared all over 144 is equal to 1. Now, I can write this one to look like a factor. So I can have something like a, um, 9 a squared all over 12 squared because 12 times 12 is 144 minus uh, uh, 16 y squared all over 12 uh, Square because 144 is 12 square is equal to 1. And I know that 3 can cancel each of these. So 3 in 9 will give us 3 L square. And okay, this thing that we have here, this is a 12 square. This is so I can rewrite this one to half square as a 3 square x square all over 12 square minus a 4 square y square all over. 14 square, I know 12 square is equal to 1. Now, since all of them carry squares, I can rewrite this one as a 3x all over 12 according to law of indices, everything square minus uh, this one will be 4y all over 12, everything raised to the power 2 is equal to 1. Now, this 3 can cancel 12. 3 in 12 will give us 4. So I'm having x square all over 4. Minus 4 in 12 give us 3. Y square all over 3 is equal to 1. Now, this particular thing I have here, in order to make it look like this, this is having square there. That means I have to write this one to show square. That, this 4 will be 2 raised to power, uh, two, raised to power 2. This one, 4 in 12, okay. That, that's the... Uh, sorry. If I square this... 3 and 12, that's 4 squared, that's 16. This one, 4 and 12, 3, with this square, this gives us 9. So, if you look at this one now, I can write this one to have a square. So I can rewrite it as a x square all over 4 square minus y square all over this 9 actually is a 3 squared is equal to 1. If you compare it to the standard equation of the parabola that I wrote originally, which is this y squared all over b squared is equal to 1, we can see that a will be 4. Our a is 4. When you compare, 
our B is equal to 3. Now, you know, I gave a formula concerning finding the eccentricity E. And then I've already said that my C is square root of A squared plus B squared. So let me find my C before we solve any other problem. C is equal to square root of uh, A squared plus uh, B squared, which is square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is square root of 25. And square root of 25 is 5. That is this particular value for C. So the next thing we are going to do is to start solving the problems. The first question says the vertices and the co-vertices. The vertices are the vertices on the x-axis because the focal length is on the x-axis. And the co-vertices are the vertices where the focal length are not located. These are the V3 and V4. So uh, for the V1, V2 that I wrote the formula the other time, which is a plus or minus a comma zero. Since our A has been obtained to be 4, so my vertices V1 and V2 is going to be plus or minus 4, comma, 0. For the co-vertices V3 and uh, V4, I have already written the formula for the co-vertices. That is 0 plus or minus B. Since our B is 3, I can have it as a 0 plus or minus uh, 3. So we have answered the question on the vertices and the co-vertices. Then for the focal point F, you know, I wrote the formula for the focal point F to be plus or minus C, zero. So I will write it plus or minus uh, C, zero. Since I have obtained my C to be five, I will put it as F is equal to plus or minus five comma zero. We have solved the question concerning finding the length of the uh, focal points. Now, to find the length of the transverse axis, like I said the other time, the formula for the length of the transverse axis, which is this, is 2a. So, transverse axis, this T stands for transverse. Transverse axis is 2a. And then the value of my a that I have here is 4. So, it's going to be 2 times 4, which is 8 units. So that is the formula for the transverse axis. The next question says we should find the, uh, the length of the conjugate axis. The conjugate axis length is 2b. So conjugate axis, I'll write this c, con, then axis. That is conjugate axis. It's uh, 2 times b. And then my b that I found the other time is 3. That's 2 times 3. So the length of the conjugate axis will be 6 units. Now, the second one says we should find the eccentricity. Like I said the other time, the formula for eccentricity uh, 3 is, can be obtained from this formula. So C is equal to eccentricity times length A. And length C that I have the other time is 5. I can put it as 5 is equal to E. Then the value of A that I got there is 4. So times uh, 4. To get eccentricity E, you divide both sides by 4. Therefore, 5 all over 4 is equal to E. So that's the uh, eccentricity of this uh, hyperbola. You know that uh, 5 divided by 4 will be 1 point something. That means it's greater than 1, which proves the value of eccentricity of a, an hyperbola that should always be greater than 1. Then the next one says equation of the asymptosis. Asymptosis are the straight line that is drawn through the origin in such a way that they do not touch the parabola. So the formula for my asymptosis is y for both asymptotes will be plus or minus b all over a, x, which is plus or minus. My b that I got the other time is 3, and the a is 4. So it's going to be 3 all over 4, x. So the two asymptotes for this particular question is plus or minus 3 all over 4, x. So this particular problem that we solve is the hyperbola whose foci are located on the x axis. At times, you can have an hyperbola that are located on the y axis. So the foci will be on, along the y axis. 
For this one too, you have the uh, foci along the y axis. So <clears throat> it's going to be like this. This is the vertical uh, hyperbola. And the one we just did now is the horizontal hyperbola. I'm highly grateful for listening to this uh, tutorial. Before we go, please kindly subscribe, like, and share my video. Have a nice day. Bye.